devotion Welcome guys, welcome to the last video of our mini series. This video is all about um, how we got Zephyr to being ocean worthy really and how we revived it, what works we did, um, everything that that entailed. So out of the waterworks, in the waterworks and everything up to the point of being able to cross the Atlantic with her. So, yeah. yeah. Let's get right into it. So as Nat said, um, we had lots of works that we needed to do in and out of the water. Um, so the way those works were going to break down is we had works that we had to do while we were on the hard in Nanny Key, and then works that were going to take place once we got to St. Martin. So I guess jumping right into it, the works we had to do when we were in Nanny Key while the boat was on the hard, um, we're as follows. We're as follows. Removing all of the old rigging. There was tons of um, bits and bobs really yeah. everywhere. There's just a ton of stuff that we had to get rid of before even moving the boat anywhere. Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean we couldn't even get inside the boat because no. all the old rigging was there, the old mast sections. Exactly. So that was pretty much the first thing we did as we arrived onto the boat. Gel coat repairs. Yeah, so because we were going to be in the yard, we were going to use the uh, out of the water. <laughs> Ready? <right? laughs> Ready needs to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> so while we were out of the water, we were going to anti foul the bottom, but we also had a few gel coat repairs sort of right around the water line, so we were going to use our time out of yeah. the water to get that done as well. Um, also, while we were on the hard, we were going to service the engine, um, things like changing the oil, the filters. Um, and basically checking the belts, etc. Um, we were going to check the rudder, check the prop, change the anodes, seal the keel. Um, then we got kind of got stuck into the electrics, and um, it took us like half a day to change the chart plotter, which we had bought uh, a not a brand new one, a second hand one, yeah. and um, we had no clue how to install it, <laughs> and it just took us forever <laughs> until we finally found... We got it in the end. Yeah, we got yeah. it in the end, but anyway. Yeah, because our old chart plotter, the display was fried, wasn't it? So. Yeah. Other things we did was release all the anchor chain, double check that it was all okay, yeah. and um, so we did all that by hand. And you counted it out, because we I, didn't know yeah. how much we had, did And we, we counted it out, because we didn't have a clue how much was on actually on attached on the boat. Mm. Um, so we did all that and we also got stuck into trying to get rid of barefoot life oh. off the front um, which took us a long long time because it was like sticker upon sticker and upon sticker. Oh, yeah. So when you thought you had one layer off there was actually like two others there. It was so <laughs> big that it yeah. really wasn't it? So. And then the last thing that we did was we just went around the boat and just checked everything that we needed to check while it was on the hard. Yeah. Didn't we, basically, so. Um, but yeah, so that was all the, th those were the main works that we needed to take care of while we were on the hard. So we spent, I think, five days? Yep. Yeah, so I think we spent- Because it was very, very costly to stay any longer in that boat yard, especially in the Annie Key one. Um, so we knew that we had to get out as fast as possible. So we were just like, go, 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 get it done, get it in the water. And we kind of just thought, just do the bare minimum that we can right now. And considering we didn't know anything really yeah. back then, and we just, we knew that the most important thing was the anti-fouling. So we were like, we know we need to get that done. Yep. And any like other problems. The and that was it. We got it in the water yeah, after five we, days. We launched it. Boom. Not even knowing how to drive a boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we did a little shakedown cruise to St. Martin. No. No, we didn't. We did for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big shakedown That's cruise. That's a huge shakedown. <laughs> okay. Then we did a shakedown cruise to Virgin Gorda, um, which was what? How many nautical miles? I can't remember any nautical miles, but it was about three and a half hours. Oh, yeah, so it wasn't very long. No. Um, and we went up there and James crashed the boat for the first time ever. <laughs> Straight into the um, dock. We were trying to get petrol, or diesel, sorry. Yeah. We were trying to get diesel and James pretty much just boom. I thought I could just pull up to this dock and the wind and the current and... I don't know where you got your um, I don't know where I confidence thought I, from. I have no idea. We hadn't been 
we we hadn't driven it anywhere apart from that was it. Well, I don't know if it was cockiness or just sheer. Like I was just scared for my life. I just wanted to get that boat to a dock because it was because anyway, it was a tight marina. Wasn't I've it? never seen James so scared in his life. <laughs> After that, and we kind of just like got out of there. Plus, everyone was screaming at us. So we got out of there <laughs> and managed to get back to Nanki. Yeah. I don't think we discovered anything wrong with the boat after that shakedown, did we? No. Not not initially, anyway. No. So, the engine ran great. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, the boat really did well. That was also the first time we anchored on that trip. It was the first time we anchored, first time we tried to like dock at a... Yeah. Um, and yeah, so it was just a, all a little bit crazy, and but it, the boat was perfect, so we were really, really happy that the shakedown went really well. Now, the next... Bit was just waiting for the right weather mm. to head to St. Martin. So St. Martin is about 90 nautical miles, so it was our biggest by far um, cruise, really. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was going to be massive, and we'd never no. driven the boat really other, other than the Virgin Gorda, had we? Yeah, and after waiting for about a week, I think, or we a week a and while. a half, yeah. we waited for the good weather to come, and pretty much there was no good weather to come by our way. So in the end, what we did is we just decided to go. Red wants to come back in. So. Right, 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 right. <laughs> it is cold out today, though, so I will give him that. Hello! I'm so beautiful. I'm so beautiful. Okay. So we did the 90 nautical mile motor, and everything went well. Um, yeah. We were pretty... It was our first overnight. Um, so it yeah. was it was kind of scary in that sense, and neither of us slept because we were just so, I guess, hyped up and then also nervous and really seasick. Very seasick, yeah. So it was just like, <laughs> oh my god, what do we do? And we ended up leaving when the weather wasn't. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. It was, bad. The, be it was, it the, was best just the best of a bad situation. Yeah, and we just kind of thought, let's just go, but. We didn't have a clue at how bad it was going to be without a mast. Um, and not having a mast, literally the boat was just like... <laughs> yeah, pitching and rolling and... It was oh my gosh. awful. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we managed to, to do it. 20 hours later. 20 hours later, <laughs> we arrived into St. Martin. And that's really where all our boat, real boat works began. Absolutely. Um, because that was our goal, was to get there, to get all the boat works done. <laughs> Red, I'm gonna have to put you out, up? Right? No, he's fine. I'm I don't sorry. know why he's so dirty, though. What have you been doing? He just wants love. The two biggest priorities were getting our new mast put on, and the second being the fiberglassing of the chain plate. Yeah. Um, so those were the two most important things. Obviously not in that order. First we had to get the fiberglassing <laughs> done <laughs> of the chain plate so we could fix the chain plate in and then get, put the new mast put in. The new mast on, yeah. So those were our two biggest projects, but then we also had a ton of other ones. We had a lot of repairs and minor things that we wanted to either change or fix. And then we had the upgrades we wanted to make to Zephyr because we were gonna cross the Atlantic. Yeah. So moving on, we'll first talk about the two major repairs, which were having the new mast installed and the chain plate fiberglassing. Um, I know I've had a lot of questions about those. Um, so I guess starting with the, the fiberglassing. So the reason the chain plate needed to be repaired was because when the mast was actually knocked over when the boat was in storage, it pulled the port side chain plate tie rod out of its anchor. It didn't actually damage the hull, it just damaged the anchor where the tie rod was mounted to. So we needed to have that refiberglassed, and then there's also a little bit of fiberglassing just at the top where the uh, where the cap was. So next was the mast. So our mast was, as we mentioned before, it was a Z spars and it was from France, and they actually ship it in two pieces. So the mast is actually assembled in the yard and they splice it together. And then it was craned and installed on top of our boat. And that was a really proud moment for the two it of was. us. Uh, it took our boat from being a motorboat to a sailboat. Yeah. Um, and we were pretty happy and pretty proud of that moment. It was a lot of work to get there. Um, as part of obviously the mast um, installation, installation um, there was a few other things that we had to change as a result. So we bought a new sail. Yeah because we went for an infilling rig. And we also had to change some of our running rigging. This is partly due to some of it being old, but also because 
the, the setup was a little bit different with the uh, infrowing main. Uh, so after the mouse, other things that we needed to change or sort of fix really was uh, some more minor stuff. Um, I know we changed the stanchions, uh, we changed the front hatch. Mm -hmm. um, we, so we swapped our tenders, you might have seen in our earlier videos, we had a big yellow tender that Nat really liked. I love that tender. But it was too big and it took on so much water. Um, so we got a smaller lightweight aluminum AB. The only thing was it leaked a little bit of air, um, and so we had to fix the air leaks in that, but she's all good now. Um, the big thing that I had to do that Nat was <laughs> on me day and night for was um, our both the before and aft toilets, the, all the pipes have calcified. Yeah, so Danes had to get into the toilets and <laughs> sort that out. That was awful. Because it meant that we couldn't even use the toilets and after yeah. all the works that we were being, like that were being done on our boat, we couldn't shower, we couldn't do anything. Um, it was all like a, just a construction site on yeah. our boat and the one thing was like, <laughs> please can we just use the toilet? Yeah. Um, so Jane's got onto that seat. Yeah. Have you repaired both and... Yeah, they're both great yeah. now. They work fine. So we swapped out all the piping for the toilets. And then, of course, there's a ton of little minor things that we did. I mean, there's just yeah. too many to list. We'd be we'd be here forever just trying to list them all. But. Yeah, there's just a lot of work. It's like painting the teak. And, oh yeah, you did the teak. Um, there's just so much stuff. Like we... The, those months spent in St. Martin mm. were just boat works to a T. Like, we just didn't stop. Yeah. The boat was finally ready to sail. Yeah, she was good. Uh, we took her out for a sail and everything was perfect. We were like so, so happy. We didn't even know what we were doing on that first sail. Um, <laughs> I remember we p pulled out the main um, sail. We had the head sail out. We were like, oh, we could crack this. This is, <laughs> this is easy. And um, we were like, let's pull out the mainsail, let's do this. And as soon as we pulled it out, of course, our boat healed, which is what it's meant to do. And yeah. we just kind of looked at each other and we were just like, oh my God. And like, we were just like, no, 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 this isn't normal. <laughs> and we like pulled it way back in. Um, so we pretty much just did head sail for the first few Weeks, yeah, I think. yeah, definitely because we were too scared to pull out the mainsail. Well, we I think we pulled like, it, oh yeah. We oh, we'd pull out like a sliver, that's right. And then we'd be like, oh my god, it's healing a bit quick, anyway. Put it back in. Um, so yeah, we were we were very, very scared at the beginning of using yeah. the mainsail, I think. <laughs> but anyway, so that was done, and we tried it out, and then we kind of got into our sailing a bit more and just learning how the boat worked and how yeah. you know what We'd healing was all about. Yeah, we knew it would heal, like. It wasn't that we didn't know anything about sailing, like we'd read so much literature, we were watching videos, we'd actually managed to go out on a couple sails yeah. with some friends back in Australia. But it was just the, it was just the feel of it on it our boat. Us. Yeah, on our boat. And yeah. no one being there to be like, I got this, it's my boat, I've got it. Like it was our boat and something. It was all on us. Yeah. yeah. And I think it was just like, oh man. But anyway. So the boat was ready to sail and we went around sailing. Yeah, we had a great time. I think we went to Puerto Rico. Yeah. Um, and then back through the BVIs. Yeah. Um, and then we decided we had to go back to St. Martin. So there was, um, we wanted just to some, some additional changes to the boat that we wanted to make because we decided that we were gonna cross the Atlantic. Um, and St. Martin's such a great place to get parts and get work done and you know, there's a great lagoon that you can hide your boat in. So. We made the decision, we sailed back to St. Martin. Yeah. And that's when we did all the major upgrades to the boat, didn't we? So we began all the upgrades we wanted to make um, on Zephyr. And that included new batteries, because the batteries we had weren't working well, and we only had four. Yeah, we only had so... 110 amp hours before, and we needed significantly more, and we actually moved up to 420 amp hours, which was good. We managed to buy two solar panels for such a good price yep. and we like installed them, got all of that done and yep. suddenly we finally had power um, had without power. Yeah. having to start the engine every yeah. <laughs> hour. <laughs> yeah, no, that's 100% right. So we now have 500 watts of solar power for those that are curious and from that solar power we can charge the batteries to the point where we can run the water maker without even having without turning the boat on, which is fantastic. So, um, 
we changed our VHF. We yep. did have one that worked and it was fine. Um, but James just wanted one that was a little bit more reliable and yeah, and something new, that was a bit newer. That you know, that thing was very old. Well, it was like ten years old at that point, and um, also there was an issue with the MSI oh, yeah, number. It, remember, yeah. so it was going to involve us sending it back to the states. And when we weighed up the costs and all that, we were like, let's just upgrade to a new radio in the end. I think. Yeah. So. Um, <clears throat> Dinghy um, motor. We had bought that the first time round. We did. We did. Um, the first time we were in St. Martin. But, um, yeah, we forgot to mention it, so I'm just saying it now. That was an upgrade. Because yeah, we that's had true. been rowing up to that point. <laughs> the rowing. Yeah. The rowing. Uh, we got Iridium Go um, all sorted because we knew by that point that we were going to be crossing the Atlantic, so we needed something to be able to contact and have weather, yeah. wide out at sea and all that, so we got that. Uh, one of the other things that we did was we um, we had a backup navigation system, so we installed OpenCPN on one of our computers and also um, bought a GPS uh, device that um, it's basically turned our computer into a chart plotter. So yeah. that was there as a backup. We upgraded um, all our charts for our um, chart plotter as well, so we had we bought all the relevant Navionics cards for uh, yeah. Europe. We also got new jack lines. Um, and so one of the other things we did was we needed to change the autopilot head unit. Um, the one we had worked, but occasionally there was a it, it would uh, it would have a bit of a fault in it. Um, so we didn't go brand new. I actually managed to find uh, an exact replacement of the one that we had, um, which was great. And we still use it to this day, and it has been faultless. So, I mean, there's been a number of other sort of changes we've made to the boat, little small upgrades here and there, um, but, we, you know, we're not going to sit here and list all of them, there's just there's, there's quite a few. But we just sort of decided we want to give you a quick glimpse into some of the major ones that we had, we had done. Um, and the ones that were really recommended to us for, yeah. open, you know, doing open ocean passages. So, uh, so that's it, guys. So that's just a quick recap of all the changes that we made to Zephyr from the, the works on the hard, um, the repairs that we had in, done in St. Martin and some of the upgrades we did to, to get Zephyr really ready for all those big passages we've done already. We hope you like this three-part series. Um, it's something we've really been wanting to do for a while and something you guys have been asking for quite a lot. It hopefully it gave you like a kind of timeline of from buying the boat or from the very beginning when we were researching to buying the boat to then the financial side and now to where it's at like what what it took to get in it to what it needed to be to be able to be able to be <laughs> you got so tongue tied <laughs> that was awesome yes red oh, i can't think today ready poos catch us next week guys as it's finally time to head back to zephyr and get started on those much needed projects Consider clicking on us to subscribe to our channel and follow the journey aboard Zephyr.